one, one interesting mushroom legality story that I'm always fascinated. Has anyone ever been to Switzerland before and tried to buy mushrooms? One person? Okay, right then. So at least when I was there, it might be different now, but when I was there, the way that they kind of maneuvered around the law was they um, would sell them as like fertilizer. So they would sell cannabis as they called doof sack, right? A smell sack. So you poke, poke holes in it and put it in your incense drawer for non-smoking, just for smell. And then the mushrooms were just for fertilizer. So you put that in the to you fertilize your plants, right? Again, interesting. <coughs> so I'm very happy to announce that our next speaker is Irina Alexander. She is coming from the Zendo Project and just came back from uh, Burning Man, so obviously she's been kind of wiped out from that, and she's about to get ready for symbiosis, so another round of exciting things coming up, so uh, she's going to give you a little rundown on uh, the basics of the Zendo Harm Reduction Training, and with a big round of applause for Irina. I feel like in this time in between the burn and before symbiosis, I just have to like apologize before I say anything because my brain is just like, woo. <laughs> so I'm gonna do my best here. And this is the first time I'm actually using a phone for notes and it feels so rude, I swear I'm not texting. <laughs> um, but to start out, how many of you are going to symbiosis? Okay, a lot. Yeah. What's that? I might go. Oh, okay. <laughs> I hope you do. I hope you do. Um, so just to let you know, we have a training, a Zendo training there that is open to everyone, including maybe people who even want to train and then plug in for some thoughts that other people don't make it to, uh, which always happens, man. Uh, so that is Thursday from 12.30 to 2.30 at the Movement Shala space, wherever that is. This is actually my first symbiosis, so I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> someone set that down now. Okay. So, um, just to kind of get a sense, I'm thinking of doing like a little mini Zendo training right now and doing a little like harm reduction 101, what to do when someone's tripping balls and how to help them. How does that sure. sound? Yeah. 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 Cool. And what I like doing for these trainings is like really interacting with the audience because you guys know, like everyone's got their own little tips and tricks and you know, yeah, getting everyone involved is fun. So maybe at the end, if we have time, we'll do a little like scenario skit thing. So, Zendo, how many of you have heard about Zendo? Woo! Okay, cool. Um, for those of you who haven't, Zendo is a space that's organized by MAPS, the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies. That's always a fun one to say. Um, and the Zendo is a space where people who are having a difficult experience, oftentimes due to psychedelics, or related to psychedelics, and oftentimes just because they're at a festival and everyone's tripping there, even if they're not taking psychedelics. Um, it's a space where you can go and you can be like, hey, I need someone to talk to, or hey, I need a safe space to just sit down, or hey, I need some water and you know a little bit of chill time so that I can kind of reground, get my shit back together, and then continue on. And the cool thing about the Zendo is that it's not just a harm reduction space, although that's how we have to present it to festivals due to legality and such, and fuck the Rave Act. <laughs> but it's also a space where people can come in and actually have transformative experiences, right? It's, it's a space where we, at the Zendo, really believe that psychedelics can cure and heal and have so much power and so much capability. So the Zendo is a space where we're not doing therapy, but we're providing a space just for whatever process needs to unfold to unfold. Um, really trusting in the medicine to kind of take its course. So, with that, the four main tenets of the Zendo. The first one is creating a safe space. So, I'm going to kind of like pull the audience or reach out to the audience here. When you're tripping balls, or when a friend of yours is tripping balls, <laughs> what is it that you want to see? What makes a space safe for you? Quiet. No muggles. Quiet, oh, low, light. low lights, <laughs> soft. <laughs> Did someone say no muggles? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter represent? Um. Stillness. Stillness? No intrusions from outside. No intrusions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hopefully not very populated. Not very populated? Yeah. Soft music, comfortable. Yeah, not loud. Not loud. No phones. No phones. Yeah, yeah. It kind of feels like this space, actually. <laughs> Except for my phone. Um, 
Uh, yeah, so those are all of the things that we try to do at the Zendo, is really create this bubble. When you walk into it, you're like, oh my god, my awesome psychedelic grandma lives here. <laughs> and she's feeding me water and snacks while I'm tripping. Um, so creating a safe space, that's the number one thing. And within that, there are kind of two different ways that I like to think about it. First off, when you're going into an experience, before you go into an experience, and I think this is particular, particularly true with mushrooms, they... Um, they're really sensitive, you know? Um, so before you go into an experience, really check in with set and setting. So set is internally. Internally, have you eaten? Have you just two seconds ago broken up with someone? Mm -hmm. True story. <laughs> Psychedelics don't make you feel good, I mean, <laughs> um, have you, uh, have you slept? Are you on any medication that might interfere with the psilocybin? Um, have you, are you at a festival where it's really dusty and, you know, dose-wise, what are you thinking of taking? And maybe, maybe you want to take a little bit less when it's a really crazy environment out there. So, so set. So it's just like internally really checking in with yourself and really taking time to be like, okay, am I going to use mushrooms today? Step one. Once you get to step two and you're like, yes, I'm going to use mushrooms today, if that is what you decide. Step two is the setting, so the environment that you're in. And that might mean, like, generally speaking, that night, what you're going to be doing. Are you going to be going to a concert? Are you going to be at Burning Man? Are you going to be, like, home alone in your teeny apartment that you can't step out of because there are strangers outside? <laughs> um, do you have toilet paper? <laughs> Stuff like that. Um, so setting. So, like, really being like, okay, internally, good to go. Green light. Externally, where am I going to be? And the external factor is something that you can keep kind of checking in with throughout the entire day, night, whatever process, journey. Um, so externally, like, if you kind of get into a space, you're like, man, I don't know, this music, it's weird. I'm starting to feel like, it's really hard once you're tripping to, like, to sometimes differentiate between external and external, internal and external factors. You know, like, it might, like, come up internally and you might be like, oh, I'm feeling anxious suddenly. Oh, there's like all this stuff going on, and, and then you're like, oh, dubstep. <laughs> we gotta go. <laughs> um, so, so like really keeping an eye on both of those things and trying to figure out like what's internal and what's external and how you can navigate both of those spaces. So that's safe space, right? Like creating that little bubble that's either, either you hopefully create ahead of time, and if not, then you know, in the moment of like, a oh, challenging, difficult experience, what do I do? Try to navigate that. Um, and have buddies. Buddies are always good. So creating a safe space is the first thing. The second thing is talking through, not down. So what's an example of talking someone down when they're tripping balls? Telling them what they're experiencing is okay. real. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, yeah. Telling them what they're experiencing isn't real. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, so what's interesting about that one is that it's not that, um, you know, oftentimes we'll say, like, if someone comes in and they're like, oh, I took, you know, three grams of mushrooms and, you know, now I'm, like, feeling really out there. And then an hour later, they're like, I don't understand what's going on with me. I don't understand what's wrong. Like, it, it's fine to remind someone, like, oh, when you came in, you told us that you took three grams of mushrooms. You know, it's, it's fine to, like, to kind of, like, give them that little note, <laughs> you know, like, cliff notes, by the way, asterisk, you're on mushrooms, um, but, but um, I, I think more of the talking through not down as if someone's like, if someone's like, oh my god, I am, I am floating in space right now, and I can see all of the ships, don't you see the ships, you see the ships, don't you, they're right there, don't you see it, and you're like, shut the fuck out, <laughs> you were just making, like, you were hallucinating, you know, so that's more of the, like, talking through not down, because what happens when you do that is, like, the, the plant medicine is being like, hey, there's this experience that I want to take you on, check this out, and you're like, Shh. hey, stop that. No. <laughs> yeah. So it's like kind of channeling you into a direction which most of the time is the right direction. It's the direction that you need to see, the direction that you need to go to, the direction that you, you set an intention to explore. And suddenly 
if someone comes in, either you internally or a friend externally or a stranger, and is like, come on, stop tripping so hard. <laughs> like, chill out. You know, it's kind of like when someone when someone tells you uh, to stop worrying. <laughs> when does that ever work? <laughs> you know? like, you're like stressed. Oh, I'm so stressed. Like, can you just not be? <laughs> you got to move through the experience instead of trying to just squash it. I think the only time that... I would um, not necessarily, or kind of sway a little bit away from this, would be when paranoia comes up. Um, and that's one of the hardest things to work with um, within the Zendo, especially, you know, because we're total strangers and people come in and they want support. And then if they become paranoid and they're like, you're an FBI agent, I'm not going to be like, well, how does that make you feel? <laughs> so... Um, in that case, I'll be like, actually, no, you're at the Zendo, you know, you took psychedelics, da da da. Um, yeah, but other than that, there's like so much awesome exploration that you can, they can help the person do by really kind of meeting them and being like, whoa, what does that spaceship look like? That's cool, yeah. Um, yeah, so that is number two, talking through, not down. Number three is sitting, not guiding. So we really stress at the Zendo that we're not doing therapy. A lot of us are within the mental health field, but once we're in the Zendo, we're just peer-to-peer -peer counselors. You know, peer-to-peer -to -peer -to -peer people. <laughs> Peers. <laughs> yes, that. Um, so in the Zendo, we're never kind of taking someone anywhere. You know, we're letting them take the first step and we're just following directly. We, we don't have a sense of their history. We don't have a sense of what they've gone through, what trauma they've experienced, of their mental health. It's, we're not in a space also to get consent from them because they are altered coming into the space. So it's not something where, um, although, although there are situations where guiding is definitely you know, agreed upon ahead of time and really, really beautiful and powerful, because people are coming into us in this different state, in this different situation, we don't take on that role. We take on the, okay, Cool, let's, you want some water? Yeah, what are, you, what are you thinking? What are you talking about? Cool, awesome. It's, it's a very kind of like hands-off sort of role. And oftentimes what comes up for people is that it's too hands-off and they feel like like um, there's like an ego drive to do something. You know, there's an ego drive to um, feel important and feel like you're helping. So oftentimes like, you know, I've, I felt that within myself, like, oh, I haven't said anything in the past hour. Should I say something? Should I do something? Should I intervene? I feel like I'm not you know, being helpful in this situation. And that comes up a lot for Zendo um, volunteers is, is this like need to do something? Well, so much of the time, it's literally, you know, the phrase holding space. Like that's, that's what a lot of it is, just being there with someone to kind of like tether them while they're floating up here. And you're like, it's cool, go ahead. I'm still down here, it's all good, you know? So yeah, so um, that's a really big one. Those are the big three. Number four? is there's no such thing as a difficult, or there's no such thing as a bad trip, only difficult experiences. So um, I, this is something that I've worked in the past few years to kind of just like get out of my vocabulary. <laughs> like when I refer to my bad trips, I no longer refer to them in the, you know, from the past. Um, I often just talk about like, yeah, this one time I had a really difficult experience, and this is what happened, and this is what I learned from it, and this is how I grew. Because I, I feel like a lot of the time when people do talk about bad trips, it becomes this thing that, like, you wish didn't happen, and, you know, it was really icky, and you didn't learn anything from, and, you know, why did I take psilocybin that night anyway? And we at the Zendo really perceive difficult experiences to be something that you can grow, for, grow from, and... You know, not, not just that, but honestly, like, the difficult experiences are the ones that really make us who we are. Um, yeah, so those are, those are, like, the four big ones. And <laughs> this is a fifth one that I, like, thought of on the way here, just because I'm in the festival space that I'm in. Um, <laughs> this is not a Zendo rule. <laughs> but something that I thought of that's, like, really useful as a tool for me is coming up with, like, a superhero like while you're in a difficult space. And this can, this can be anything from like some sort of spiritual affiliation that you have or um, you know, a, a, like an individual that you know or a god that you believe in. Um, for me, it's a sparkly unicorn. <laughs> and I swear to you, like two years at Burning Man, I just, 
I could, I got stuck in an acid loop, you know, in one of those, like, you're like, you like pretend to take a nap while you're on acid, which never works. You're like, no, this time it's going to be different. Um, <laughs> and, and you're just lying there and suddenly you're like, oh, I have to pee. And then you're like, oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, I have to pee. Oh, no, it's fine. Oh, I have to pee. And then, like, after that happens like seven times, I was like, okay, I need an intervention. <laughs> I need something different to happen. So, so I like just channeled this like sparkly unicorn being that just like floated and was like, Irina! Like in that voice too, like, Irina! You need to go to the party party, follow me! And it totally worked! Like I was like, oh god, fine, okay, let's go. Um, and I like followed up to the party party. So, I don't know, if, if that's helpful, hopefully one of you will tell me someday, like, oh my god, I had like, um, I don't know, a bubbly dinosaur come to me. It's really, yeah. um, that's what this talk is all about. Um, so, let's see. Aside from that, um, psilocybin-specific harm reduction tips that I was just thinking about, I mean, Arrowhead, like, fantastic, go, read it, everything, awesome, awesome site. Um, know your dose, there's a huge difference between one and a half grams, three grams, seven grams. <laughs> um, mushroom chocolate, careful, be careful. <laughs> Here, just eat this one, it's a dose. <laughs> Um, yeah, and, and then just the like sensitivity to setting. I think um, mushrooms are just like really, to me personally, just feel very like aware of where you are and what you're doing. Um, and I, I really like as a harm reductionist, I try not to say don't do certain things, but I'm gonna make an exception. <laughs> I mean, if you can come to me and be like, no, I know you're totally wrong, and I'll be like, okay, fine, but. Don't mix psilocybin with other things. I'm gonna just say that. Um, especially psilocybin and acid can be really, really tricky. And again, like I completely respect you if that is what you've done. You've had an awesome, incredible, life-changing experience. Do you count weed as another thing? I think that's case by case basis. Yeah. Um, I think if it's the first time that you're using psilocybin, which I doubt that any, <laughs> um, <laughs> any of you have friends who are using for the first time, um, <laughs> uh, then then it's always nice to get just that substance to like spend a little. It's like a date, you know. You like want to get to know. Okay. You know, and if your date brings a friend, you're like, I thought this was a. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and with with psilocybin and acid, I've just seen, you know, zendo case after zendo case of people coming in being like, well, you know, I started with psilocybin, and then halfway through I took acid, and then they kind of like just, they just get like angry with each other from what I've experienced other people experiencing, <laughs> you know, it's like, they're like, no, this is my trip, no, this is my trip, and then it's just, it's just difficult. Um, but not bad. <laughs> Difficult is not the same as bad. Um, yeah, so then integration is a huge piece of it, and Erie is absolutely incredible for that. You can talk to Larry about that. Um, yeah, they have integration circles, and you can actually, like, like the work isn't the psychedelic experience, as you all know. You know, it's, it's like the work after. You can have a really difficult experience, and it can be really, really challenging. You can be doing a lot of work through it, but then once you get back, I'm, you know, I'm like still throwing. My, my car is still dusty. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, we, I also plan this event called Integration Station which is happening, it's in San Francisco. Um, we release the address kind of like right before it happens and we have therapists, coaches, body workers, workshops, tea servers um, throughout like this entire day. It's kind of like what decompression is supposed to be. <laughs> it's an integration station. Um, so you can find that page on Facebook, facebook.com slash integration st. <laughs> integration st, yeah. Um, <laughs> So that will be October 23rd, all day. Um, yeah. So, how am I on time? One, one minute, you take the questions. You one minute? Okay. Okay. I won't do, I won't do a, no, okay. Cool. Uh, any questions? I just want to say, you're fucking awesome. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs>
I'm also one of the co-organizers of San Francisco Psychedelic Society, so um, get at me if you want to volunteer or anything, and follow us on Facebook too. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thanks.